Hello, good day, boys and girls. Welcome to ITTV. For today's lesson, let's focus on a healthy cardiovascular system. Now, the learning objectives for today's lesson will be to research and discuss choices of nutrition and lifestyle which can lead to a healthy cardiovascular system and to understand the importance of making suitable lifestyle choices and practicing them while to select and practice suitable ways to maintain a healthy cardiovascular system. Now, what are the cardiovascular system's role in maintaining good health? As we understand, the cardiovascular system is made of the heart, blood vessels and blood. The circulation of blood keeps the body cells alive by carrying out the following functions. Firstly, to transport oxygen to body cells. Secondly, distribute nutrients throughout the body. Thirdly, remove waste from the body cells. And fourthly, to distribute heat throughout the body. So we have learned in previous lesson how important it is for the body's circulatory system to for transportation of oxygen, nutrients, uh, to cells and to remove waste products from them in the form of ammonia byproducts like urea and gaseous byproducts as well such as carbon dioxide. Now this is a picture of our cardiovascular system which consists of course of the heart, blood vessels and all the blood which are flowing through the vessels. So what is cardiovascular health? It relates to the health of the heart, blood vessels and the blood. Obstruction of blood flow can cause cardiovascular diseases such as atherosclerosis, artery thrombosis, coronary thrombosis, angina, stroke and heart failure. Cardiovascular health closely relates to the health of organs that are critically dependent on a strong blood supply. So, thrombosis refers to condition where a thrombus is formed in the artery or the coronary artery and a thrombus refers to a blood clot. Now, blood is supposed to clot when, you know, we, for example, we accidentally cut our hand or, or our skin. But if blood clots in places where it's not supposed to, like for example in, in certain arteries um, supplying blood to the brain or to the heart, then this will be detrimental because it could lead to, for example, coronary thrombosis, stroke, heart attack and eventually heart failure. Thereby, the need to maintain cardiovascular health. Maintenance of cardiovascular health and prevention of cardiovascular diseases are key to an overall healthy life. The choice of nutrition and lifestyle of an individual can directly affect the condition of the cardiovascular system. So what are the major cardiovascular diseases? So over here, in the diagram you notice there are four major cardiovascular diseases. The first one would be the coronary heart disease whereby there is obstruction of blood supply to heart muscle caused by narrowing of coronary arteries. Secondly, there is stroke, whereby there is rapid loss of brain function due to obstruction of blood flow caused by blood clot. Thirdly, heart failure is the inability of the heart to supply sufficient blood flow to meet the body's needs. Fourthly, there is the peripheral vascular disease, which will be the obstruction of large arteries blocking flow of blood. So these are just the major diseases as well as the descriptions. Now, so how about atherosclerosis? It is a blood vessel condition that leads to major cardiovascular diseases. It is a condition in which the inside of the artery wall thickens due to buildup of fatty materials such as cholesterol. Over time, the buildup turns into plaque. Formation of plaque narrows the artery and causes thrombosis, which is the blockage of blood vessels. Atherosclerosis can happen in the coronary artery which supplies blood to the heart. Blockage of the coronary artery is called coronary thrombosis and coronary thrombosis will reduce supply of blood to the heart muscles causing a heart attack. So atherosclerosis is not really considered a cardiovascular disease because it's caused by the thickening of the artery wall due to build up of fatty deposits such as cholesterol. 
um, when thrombosis happens in the coronary artery, this leads to a heart attack, which could potentially lead to heart failure. In heart attack, a person experiences angina, which is chest pain. So, if you were to refer to the diagram, the, the top picture shows a normal, healthy coronary artery. But in atherosclerosis, there are deposits of cholesterol and fatty deposits. And because of that, blood can clot there because um, there is blockage of blood flow. And blood eventually will clot easily. And if it clots in a coronary artery, it has disastrous consequences because blockage of the coronary artery will cause coronary thrombosis. And this coronary thrombosis will lead to a heart attack. So, what are the risk factors for cardiovascular disease? Risk factors refer to traits and lifestyle habits that increase a person's chances of developing cardiovascular diseases. There are two categories of risk factors for cardiovascular disease. Firstly, we have the uncontrollable risk factors that cannot be changed and we have controllable risk factors that can be managed for avoidance and recovery. So we have risk factors which we can control and some which we cannot control. So let us look at diseases of the heart, blood vessels and the blood. Now uncontrollable risk factors such as increasing age because over 83 of percent of people who die of coronary heart disease are 65 or older male sex men have a greater risk of heart attack than women do and they have attacks earlier in life the third uncontrollable risk factor would be heredity and this includes race because children of parents with heart, heart disease are more likely to develop it in themselves so therefore, a child whose parents have had heart attacks, they have a higher predisposition, higher predisposition to have heart disease as well. So this is hereditary. So three uncontrollable risk factors will be age, gender, and hereditary, whereby males um, are having higher predisposition to have heart attacks than the female gender. Now, how about those controllable risk factors such as cigarette smoking? Of course, we can choose whether we want to smoke or not. Nicotine from cigarette narrows blood vessels, causing increase in blood pressure and heart rate. Carbon monoxide competes with oxygen in the red blood cell, reducing supply to the heart. Damaged artery walls allow cholesterol deposit on the wall. Blood thickens and forms clot easily. So, what happens here is that, of course, carbon monoxide competes with oxygen in the red blood cell because our hemoglobin has a greater propensity to bind to carbon monoxide rather than oxygen. So, this is the effect of breathing in carbon monoxide from cigarette smoke. So, cigarette smoking also damages artery walls, allowing fatty deposits like cholesterol to deposit in the inner wall, thus reducing the diameter of the artery and hence potentially leading to thrombosis, which is blockage of blood flow. Now, high blood pressure is controllable because narrow blood vessels increase the pressure causing the heart to work harder. Thirdly, we have high blood cholesterol, LDL, which increases the risk of heart attack. Cholesterol deposits on artery walls block blood flow, causing supply to the heart. So this one, of course, is the bad LDL cholesterol. Of course, if you have high levels of HDL cholesterol, that's good. And HDL cholesterol can be enhanced through exercise and, of course, through wise food selections. Um, it, of course, will be bad to have high levels of LDL cholesterol. Then, of course, obesity increases blood cholesterol, triglyceride, blood pressure um, and the risk for diabetes because extra weight makes the heart work harder to supply oxygen to the whole body and then we have the fifth risk factor which would be diabetes because diabetes causes abnormal amounts of lipoprotein which speeds up atherosclerosis and raises the risk of heart attack in addition to high blood pressure cholesterol obesity diabetes we have alcohol abuse 
because alcoholic drinks can intoxicate and large and weaken the heart, can bring about congestive heart failure and stroke, and increase the triglycerides in the blood. Stress also increases cardiovascular related activities. Sustained stress will strain the cardiovascular system. So as you can see here, um, this is pertaining to large amounts of alcohol because studies have shown that um, um, small amounts of alcohol, especially red wine that contains very good antioxidants such as resveratrol are very good for the overall health. But we're talking about over consumption of large amounts of alcohol are bad. And stress especially of course is very bad for our system. For example, the CEO of Apple company just resigned, Steve Jobs. I suppose he resigned because of poor health problems. So it's very important to actually maintain and take care of our health because without health, one can't do anything. So therefore, we need to be able to control the risk factors for certain cardiovascular diseases and um, you know and realize the importance of nutrition and lifestyle to control our cardiovascular diseases so how can nutrition and lifestyle affect the health of the cardiovascular system let's firstly look at nutrition's effect on cardiovascular system an unbalanced diet with heavier intake of saturated fats and cholesterol but low on protein and nutrients can bring about cardiovascular related diseases Consumption of excessive carbohydrates and fats leads to overweight conditions and obesity. This increases the risk of developing high blood pressure, stroke, heart attack, heart and, dis and diabetes. Excessive salt intake is also known to cause high blood pressure. Of course, we know that um, you know too much salt in soy sauce in our foods are not too good because it eventually leads to hypertension. That's why in countries like Singapore, they have this healthy food campaign whereby they actually promote um, you know customers to ask for less fat, less oil, and less salt. And even coffee shop stalls, they have um, they have these um, posters on their stalls to encourage consumers to ask for less fat, less oil and less salt content in their foods. So of course, um, but of course fasting is different. When a person fasts, it has to be done under correct conditions and preferably with um, medical advice because you would not want to um, you know, go for malnutrition and also possibly changes in blood pressure could be affected. So, we looked at nutrition that could affect the health of cardiovascular system. Things like, you know, unbalanced diet, eating disorders, or overconsumption of food. So, overconsumption, underconsumption is, is bad. So, moderation is the key and wise selection of food choices. So, let us look at lifestyle factors that affect the cardiovascular system. Poor fitness due to lack of regular exercise contributes to low efficiency of the heart and whole cardiovascular system. Excess fat in the body is unutilized and ends up as extra body weight. Well, we know that of course we need to exercise at least 3 to 5 times a week for 30 minutes a day. And of course, if we don't exercise, the extra calories that we consume will be stored up as fats. And fats are basically forms of energy storage in days where, you know, that the body just prepares ourselves in case of starvation. So if we don't, um, if we're always sluggish, we don't uh, move around a lot, then more and more fats will be stored up as adipose tissue. Smoking reduces the efficiency of the lungs, which in turn reduces oxygen levels in the blood. The heart needs to work harder to meet the oxygen needs of organs and cells. Smoking increases fibrinogen in blood, which increases the risk of blood clotting in arteries. And we all know that smoking is naturally bad for health, although it's very difficult to quit smoking. But um, the benefits of quitting smoking far outweighs, um, you know, far outweighs anything at all because smoking is generally bad for health. Excessive alcohol consumption can damage the cardiovascular system, resulting in diseases such as heart muscle disorders, irregular heart rhythms, high blood pressure and stroke. 
So of course, lifestyle factors, for example, overconsumption of alcohol, um, excessive smoking or smoking at all, poor fitness, and all that um, are all lifestyle factors which are controllable. So a healthy cardiovascular system would last a lifetime, allowing you to lead an active and healthy life. Your choice of nutrition and lifestyle plays an essential part in maintaining your long-term cardiovascular health. So you see, cardiovascular health is something that we have to invest in. If we take care of our cardiovascular health now, then it will also be able to give us benefits in the long run. Although the benefits might not, um, you know, it's something that we cannot see now, but it gives us long-term benefits in terms of a better quality of life. And you know, we'll be able to live better, longer, and when we are old or the time when we are a senior citizen, then we won't have to experience so much aches and pains and diseases had we you know, not taken care of, of our body and our cardiovascular system. Because the cardiovascular system comprises of the brain, of the heart and the blood vessels and blood. And these are all circulating in our body. If we don't take care of it now, nobody's going to take care of it for us. So we have to take responsibility of our cardiovascular system and our health. It's something like investing for the future. So let us look at how to maintain a healthy cardiovascular system by making choices in nutrition and lifestyle. So basically, there are just two things, lifestyle and nutrition. Just two simple ways to maintain a healthy cardiovascular system. Firstly, let's look at the recommended nutrition practices for cardiovascular health. Firstly, plan a balanced diet. Learn about food dietary content and identify foods that you consume. Plan a balanced diet that suits your energy and health requirements. So of course, we need to make sure that every meal that we consume consists of you know, carbohydrates, enough protein, vitamin, minerals and you know, low amounts of triglycerides. Of course, we cannot just cut down fats totally because um, you know, the brain is consisting of fats and we need certain amount of fats in our body, especially for young children who are so active. So we need to be able to read um, food labels and you know to equip ourselves with knowledge about things like calorie content per gram, about sugar, fat levels per 100 grams of food that we consume. We need to make wise food selections and always uh, plan and you know be aware of total calorie intake per day. Second recommended practice will be to control cholesterol and fat. To identify foods with high levels of bad cholesterol which are known as the low density lipoprotein and saturated fat in your diet and reduce intake of such food. If you notice carefully, it's not avoid cholesterol and food but it's to control it because we need some small amounts of it and of course we cannot avoid it. Our foods have to be uh, cooked in a bit of oil to make, uh, to make it taste better because fats actually satisfy the taste But So usually foods which have high fat content tend to taste a little bit nicer. I mean like imagine chocolates, cakes and all that taste so good compared to foods which are so healthy for us, for example, like oats, wheat germ, brown rice, brown, all the brown stuff, they don't taste as good. They're harder, but of course, they're great for our cardiovascular system, great for our waistline. There used to be this saying that, you know, when we consume foods that are so tasty, like a, like a red velvet cake or a piece of double chocolate cake, you know, it's like, one moment of um, of pleasure, but you know, three months at the waistline because um, you know fats that are stored in the body is so difficult to actually remove. And sometimes when we eat um, foods that are high in fat content, they actually activate the pleasure centers in the brain. That's why um, sometimes people feel um, good and happy when they eat foods that are containing high fat content, like for example, a, a nice plate of fried Hokkien Mee or fried Kui Tiao, which has all this, you know, tr uh, fried pork inside, pork fat inside. So we need to be able to 
identify foods that have high fat content, bad cholesterol in, in there and just limit the amount that we eat, like limit the amount of uh, bakute or limit the amount of sugary cakes and muffins that we consume per day, per week. Moving on, of course, we need to consume natural antioxidants. Increase intake of fruits, vegetables, and whole grains which contain antioxidants such as vitamin A, C, and E. There is considerable evidence that oxidants in the body contribute to development of cardiovascular disease. So natural antioxidants provide resistance to cardiovascular disease. Now, antioxidants, as the name implies, they go against oxidation because oxidants in the body, like free radicals, they actually uh, contribute to the development of cardiovascular diseases. So antioxidants found abundant in fruits, vegetables, colorful uh, fruits, vegetables, uh, you know, are rich in vitamin A, C, E, zinc, and they are very good because they combat oxidation. And um, studies have shown that antioxidants can actually prevent cancer. For example, certain antioxidants in broccoli and cruciferous vegetables like cauliflower, they actually can prevent colon cancer. And um, you know, and antioxidants generally are so good for our cardiovascular health. Fourthly is to control salt intake. Eating too much salt can raise your blood pressure and it triples your risk of developing cardiovascular disease regardless of your age. Now some people might think that I, uh, a bit of salt is okay, you know, because after all, um, foods without salt, they taste so bland. I mean, MSG, Maggi Me, all these soup noodles that we consume are so high in salt content. Even Brits contain um, quite a certain amount of salt but of course we might not be able to taste it because Brits they also put in quite a bit of sugar inside glucose so basically salt is bad because it increases blood pressure and when blood pressure is high this could actually contribute to cardiovascular diseases because high blood pressure is generally bad and of course we need to exercise regularly because people who are physically active have a lower risk of developing cardiovascular diseases compared with inactive people. To gain health benefits, you should do at least 30 minutes of moderate physical activity on most days, at least 5 days per week. WHO recommendation will be to exercise at least 5 days a week for at least 30 minutes each session. Well, a lot of people, they will say that they don't have enough time to exercise. Now, being busy is the most, uh, the most common excuse given by most people that they don't have time to exercise or no motivation or maybe the weather, it's always rainy every day. But we just have to get rid of all these excuses and just perhaps have an exercise buddy partner, you know, to motivate each other to exercise because um, the benefits of exercise, though we might not see it, are really um, tremendous in terms of our cardiovascular health because exercise can really reduce the levels of LDL cholesterol and the amount of fats that are stored in our body um, by quite significant levels. As we know, exercising improves blood circulation, reduces excess fat, reduces cholesterol levels to bad cholesterol and keeps you energetic. And if let's say a person is prone to depression, you know, exercise can actually release these feel-good hormones in the body known as endorphins. So that's why don't you notice that after a jog or after you have exercised, you feel happier because it releases these endorphins. Endorphins are known as the natural morphine in the body. Of course, don't take morphine because it's a bad drug. But endorphins are natural morphins in the human body released every time a person indulges in physical activity. And of course, we all know, avoid smoking. Smoking increases blood pressure, decreases exercise tolerance and increases the tendency for blood to clot. So you see, if you notice carefully, it's not control smoking, but it's avoid. Avoid and it's totally kick off the habit. Don't start it off. If you, if you haven't started off, don't start it off. And if you are into it, you have to try to kick the habit because smoking gives 101% of disadvantages no advantage at all. I mean, some people might think that smoking makes a person look cool, 
or perhaps to reduce stress but the disadvantages of it far outweighs the benefit far outweighs uh, whatever whatever um, you know I mean basically smoking is really terrible because uh, it actually contributes to cardiovascular diseases of course we know we have to reduce stress when under stress acknowledge it and take action by modifying or correcting the underlying causes we need to lead a balanced life with time for work relationships relaxation and fun of course it's important to work hard you know to work smart and to and to have a, a good family you know but we also need to um, take time off for ourselves to do the things that we love to find hobbies that we're interested in, to, f to know what exactly relaxes you. Because if a person is constantly um, you know, stressed up, it's definitely not good for the health in the long run. Many, many people have suffered from you know, heart attacks, strokes, people in high power positions, CEOs of big companies, MNCs, multinational companies, directors of, of um, you know, uh, blue chip companies all suffer from cardiovascular diseases because of the high stress levels and um, torturous schedule perhaps. So at the end of the day, sometimes um, perhaps um, money is not the only important thing because money can never buy back the health. There's a saying that, um, you know, that um, basically people actually, uh, they lose their health to get wealth. But when they get wealth, they need to lose the wealth to get back health. But anyway, let's look at some uh, mastery test questions. Let's look at the first question for today. Which of the following statements are true about cardiovascular diseases? 1. Coronary thrombosis will lead to a fatal heart attack. 2. Older men are more likely to have cardiovascular diseases compared to older women. 3. Children or parents with history of cardiovascular disease will be free of such disease. 4. Men are less likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease um, compared to women due to their stronger heart. Now, looking at the options A, B, C, D, try to think carefully of what, um, what you think that the answer should be. Now, the, uh, the question is about which is true. So let's stream down one by one. Coronary thrombosis will lead to a fatal heart attack. That's for sure because thrombosis will be blockage of blood flow in the coronary artery. It could lead to a heart attack. Number two, are older men more likely to have cardiovascular diseases <clears throat> compared to older women? Well, that is true as well. Men are more likely because women, we have our estrogen and progesterone to actually help us to um, <clears throat> combat the cardiovascular disease. Children or parents with history of cardio disease are free. Now that's totally off because we know that hereditary are one of the uncontrollable risk factors. Uh, for a person to have cardiovascular disease. So children of parents with history of cardiovascular disease, they have a higher risk factor, which is uncontrollable, of having the disease. For men are more likely to suffer from cardiovascular disease compared to women. Now this one is actually an opposite of option two. So if option two is correct, well, obviously option 4 is wrong. The answer is 1 and 2, which is option C. Which of the following statements are true on the effects to the health of the cardiovascular system? Number 1. Natural antioxidants found in fresh fruits and vegetables are beneficial. 2. Regular consumption of large quantities of alcohol is good for the heart. 3. Regular exercise helps to keep the cardiovascular system in good condition. 4. Cardiovascular health is affected by stress. 5. The choice of food is an uncontrollable risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So, girls and boys, what do you think is the answer for this question? Now, let's run through the options. The first one is obviously true because we know that antioxidants are very good for us. Number 2. Now, the key word here is large quantities. 
regular consumption in large quantities of alcohol is bad for the heart. So option two is definitely incorrect. Regular exercise, of course, it's good to keep our cardiovascular system in tip-top condition. So over here will be option one, option three. Let's put on hold, option one and three. But if you look at option A, B, C, D, only option B has option one and three. So, but let's look still at option four and five just to be doubly sure. Option four, our cardiovascular health is affected by stress. Well, definitely that's for sure. Well, that really fortifies our answer that option B is the answer. And let's just for curiosity look at option five. The choice of food, of course, is a controllable risk factor. Of course, the food choices has to be wise and it's definitely a controllable risk factor. Just like smoking, just like, you know, um, uh, consumption of alcohol, they're all controllable risk factors. So the answer is B. Now with that, we actually have uh, ended our lesson on a healthy cardiovascular system. Okay, that's it for today's lesson on the tips and you know all the all the tips on how to actually maintain a good cardiovascular system by re-examining nutrition and lifestyle um, practices. So with that, thank you so much for watching IDTV. We look forward to see you again another time. Have a marvelous day ahead. Thank you.